This is our Sunday School lesson for May 13th, 2018. It is from Unit 3. It's Lesson 2. And from our Bible study for adults, it's entitled Reasons to Give. And from our standard lesson commentary, it's entitled Bringing First Fruits. And our devotional reading is Ephesians, the fourth chapter and the twenty first, the twenty fifth verse, and then the fifth chapter and the second verse. And our background scripture is Leviticus two, verse fourteen, and also. The 23rd chapter of Leviticus, verses 9 through 22. Our printed passage is Leviticus, the 23rd chapter, verses 9 through 14, and also verse 22. And our key verse is Leviticus 23 and 10, which says, Speak to the Israelites and say to them when you enter the land I am going to give you and you reap its harvest bring to the priest a sheaf of the first grain you harvest our lessons aims are to explore the biblical call for offering the first fruits regret giving God's giving God leftovers, and develop a practice of giving God the first and best in everything we offer. Our lesson is properly entitled Reasons uh, to Give, and it is centered in on the giving first of all that comes from God unto us and in return how should we respond uh, how should we in like manner what should be our behavior uh, here as the text is focusing on the Israelites who are about to enter into the land that God had promised unto them and before this activity takes place, God is setting before them expectations, setting before, before them a order and procedure and sequence of operations and how things should take place. And with the intention that this is to go from generation to generation, this is to be practiced. This is to become a customary uh, ordinance and order and way of things. And not just for this time, but for times to come. I think that uh, one of the first things that we should recognize is the timing of this. Um, it's quite appropriate also uh, that this falls on the Sunday that we have set aside to recognize, honor, and appreciate mothers. Uh, because if there's ever a example of giving, God has definitely placed it uh, and nested it into the heart and spirit of mothers. So happy Mother's Day to all of the mothers all around the world, uh, even those that didn't actually give physical birth to children and yet are mothering children at the same rate. So uh, first we want to look at that. Uh, what is the significance of uh, this celebration and why is it commended to the Israelites to uh, the order and how it should be done and the practice. 
Uh, first, it says in Leviticus 23, verses 1 and 2. And the Lord speaks to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, and say to them, The feast of the Lord, which you shall proclaim to be holy convocations, these are my feast. <clears throat> when we speak of feast, holy convocations, uh, when we re recognize that God says that these are my feast, um, that's uh, a powerful statement because it does not just tend to feast in the manner in which uh, we may make the association. Sometimes we consider a feast to be a smorgasbord where we sit down and just eat until we're full and then try to eat some more. Uh, but when God speaks of a feast, God speaks of feast in the manner that it is a appointed time. There is a specific occurrence that's taking place. It's not that we are just uh, feasting and uh, satisfying our taste, but the feast of the Lord represent fixed or appointed times. And, and then also when we speak of the holy convocation, the translation of this in Hebrew uh, means a public meeting or a rehearsal. Uh, so when we uh, speak of from generation to generation, this is a practice. This is a, um, a ceremony, if you would, that is to be carried out because it is the feast it is the appointed time of the Lord. And when the Lord sets an appointed time, the Lord doesn't really uh, need a typeset to set the appointed time. God uses creation to set the appointed time. And so would we consider a eating extravaganza is actually a appointed time where God has caused the creation to yield unto mankind what is necessary for the continued provisions provided to mankind um, so that uh, we begin to recognize who is our provider. And so this celebration for why we give and what is the significance of the offering and the first fruits is, is that God, this is re referred to as the festival of weeks, the festival of weeks. Uh, it is also related to, when it says weeks, it is seven weeks, so 49 days. And then on the 50th day, which uh, has a correlation from, and this is what we mean by when God sets something in place. It, it has overriding implications. Uh, although this was something that was set in the Old Testament, it carries over all the way to the New Testament on the day of Pentecost. And the day of Pentecost was celebrated on the 50th day. And this was the yielding of the grain that God had provided in nature and caused his creations to provide a yield of harvest to mankind. Uh, and so later we see this same practice being done outside of the realm of nature, 
But now it's taking place in the realm of the spirit on the day of Pentecost, where another harvest was brought forth by the spirit, by the power of the spirit of God. And so there's another harvest, but for us to really recognize it, he started us out in the rehearsal, which again is the translation of the holy convocations, the appointed times. Starts out where we are in the customary practice of receiving the yield of the field, the harvest, and then we are already in the mindset of recognizing that God is the provider. And then God takes us into the next dimension. Just as he said, before I take you into the promised land, first there's some things that we need to establish. And so as we look at this, God is preparing the people, not just for the sake of Israel and not just for the sake of what was happening in the Old Testament, but also far reaching all the way into the New Testament in the upper room when he sent the Holy Spirit and it began another harvest. So as we are looking into our lesson. Uh, let us be mindful of how the scene was set. And as we sometimes say that he knows the ending before the beginning. And so when we look at how he prepared the Israelites, who also from generation to generation, they were also present when the Spirit indwelled in their company on the day of Pentecost, when the yield of the harvest was made present among mankind. And so as we uh, look at this, let's first identify just a couple of things um, about the first fruits. Now, sometimes uh, we think of, now it says that bring the first fruits, the best of everything that has come forth from your hard work, from toiling in the land, from tilling the land, from planting, from harvesting what was planted. The first that comes from it, bring that unto the priest. And the priest will give it unto the Lord. They will take the sheaf from the grain and they will hold it above their heads to raise it unto the Lord. Because it's not just that for, or it's not just for the priest. It's not also uh, just that uh, we offer what we have, the best of that. And uh, many times we get stuck on ourselves and we may feel as though I did this planting. I toiled this land. I uh, worked hard into the field. And why is it that I have to take the best of what I have and give it to somebody else? And then somebody else is going to yield it to the Lord. How come I can't do it myself? Again, when God does something, it is for a higher and a more um, spiritual intended purpose. It was to set in order. I'm getting ready to bring you into the land that I promised unto you. And so uh, God is setting things in order. And what he's doing is he's making everybody responsible and committed to the order that he's establishing. So the priest have to perform a service unto the Lord. They don't just get to receive the best of the yield and, and then just they begin to have a feast, but it is to provide provision 
to the priest who are serving the Lord all the year long through all the appointed times that Christ, that God has set forth. So they are constantly working. And because of the service that they're providing unto God and also for the people of God, they are not out in the field toiling and tilling the land. So therefore, God is making provision for the people that he has put in place to perform the services that are needed unto the people for God uh, and also for the people. And so because he has called them out of other forms of serving and said, now you will serve in this temple. You will perform certain duties and you will be available to the congregation. So I'm going to have you to perform another work. Well, therefore, from the first fruits of the yield, those will be offered unto you. But first, you will burn them unto me and provide unto God a sweet server, a sweet savor, an aroma unto the Lord. And so uh, when we think of, well, why do I have to give uh, my best and my first? And that would be because God gave unto us his best and his first, the only begotten son. He sent his best unto us. And so, uh, plus the other thing about it is there's a great significance identified in the first. It simply means it's number one. But after young, number one is given unto God, then number two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and on, those remain for us. So God's just saying, uh, give honor to whom honor is due. And so uh, we yield unto the Lord to show our honor, our appreciation, our respect for the sacrifices that God has made. And, and, and we also must remember that uh, as the only begotten, Christ said in John 12 and I believe 24, uh, except a kernel of corn go into the ground and die, it does not produce any grain. If it remains alone, then it doesn't produce anything. But because it is willing to die and to be transformed, now we receive the yield from it. Um, so as we're looking at these uh, uh, first fruits, you know, giving our best unto God, uh, realizing that uh, just because I gave the first uh, all the rest, he is still given to me. So uh, certainly I would want to honor what God has done and to show our appreciation. And as we look uh, further into the harvest, uh, let's also be mindful that when the text speaks to us about when we reap the harvest of the land, uh, and it, it talked to us about don't, uh, do not reap the very edges of the field and the gather uh, of the gleanings of your harvest, but leave them for the poor and for the foreigner and uh, that are residing among us, those that are strangers that are not of our fold. But it says, because I am the Lord your God. Uh, in other words, uh, we're not to hoard. There's programs out about people who are addicted with hoarding, but we're not to hoard uh, what God provides for us. We're not to be selfish or stingy with it, but we're supposed to leave some for somebody else, someone less fortunate than ourselves. 
uh, all of us have had periods of time in our life where misfortune has visited us. Uh, so therefore, when Lord, the Lord has made plentiful and bountiful for us, then we should be also providing something for others. Because uh, uh, just like they say, uh, on the way up, you see the same people on the way down. So let's be mindful of the blessings that have been bestowed upon us. Uh, also, uh, we need to uh, show to others that there is a God that is concerned about them. People many times, especially now, feel as though uh, they are just forgotten that we are in such a society of the survival of the fittest and the haves and the have-nots that uh, no one is concerned about the poor. No one is concerned about those that are less fortunate than ourselves. No one's concerned about those that have been marginalized and disenfranchised from the haves. So, uh, we as believers need to show to others that no, there is a God and the God is concerned. When we look at people that are without and are experiencing, uh, strife, uh, I think about because we're speaking of a harvest and nature, well, sometimes nature, uh, deposits drought. And uh, there isn't a harvest. Uh, and this is a occurrence of nature. But drought is of nature. But famine is of man. So uh, we can always be of assistance and help to those that are without. So uh, I would just like to leave on this note. And that is, again, focusing on the harvest, the appointed times. Christ also said that the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. And this is before he sent out the 70 additional disciples to go out into the land. Uh, again, we know the text talks about a natural harvest, but we're also talking about a spiritual harvest. And it is still true, even though this statement, this scripture was mentioned some 2,000 years ago, yet the harvest is still plentiful and the laborers are few. There is a need out there for us to fulfill. We hope that as we entertained our lesson for today that again something has been said that brought a focus to your mind that uh that kind of like uh excited or either uh, uh, we hope that it just brought something that you can reflect upon uh, that's something that you would be able to take away from this and apply to your daily living. As always, our, our prayer is that God will bless you in all of your endeavors. God bless.